Tenta falar um a um. Tudo bom? Eu fui gravar uma entrevista aqui no podcast de segurança legal. E aí eu vou entrevistar o embaixador do Egito, uhum. a Flávia, eu e o Diego Canabato vamos fazer. Uhum. Eu vou entrevistar os dois. Enquanto a gente tem uns três minutinhos para poder gravar bem. sobre a importância do gesto. Ah, é, deixa eu só esclarecer, professor. É, eu não estou fazendo isso em nenhuma capacidade oficial. Guilherme. É. É, Davi, e eu só te ajudei a formular as perguntas. Sim, é, 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 Mas tudo bem, tudo tá bem, bom? tudo bem. Aí depois eu não virei para falar, mas eu, depois eu vou Tá bom, tá bom, tá bom. Aí eu falo também um pouco do gesto. Tudo bem, tudo bem. Tá bom, sem problema. Good morning, everyone. Let's start. You can stay here, you don't need to go. We are not so many participants. Probably we can sit more in the middle, sit together. I think we can have interaction. I invite you to come in the middle here, please. If you don't like my invitation, I have a sweet bonbon for you. Please. que todo mundo vai ficar aqui. Okay, it's a great pleasure for me to be here and open this session about open forum and on collection and documentation processes. It's a great importance for the memory and research for our internet governance history. My name is Hartmut Glaser. I work for CGI.pr in Brazil. It's the organization who coordinates our recommendations, standards, and strategic directives of the internet in Brazil. And we work under a multi-stakeholder uh, participation model. CGIBR is, since it was created, promoting different projects that seek the production and dissemination of information about different aspects of internet governance. Through the work of our departments, we like to name them centers, study centers, uh, how they integrate NICBR, the Brazilian Network Information Center. CGI is responsible for producing and publishing technical manuals, statistics, studies, educational materials about information and communication technologies. It's a very important part of the work conducted by NICBR, and the major part is made available as an open access fashion. We propose this open forum to present a recent initiative being developed under CGIBR, an internet governance collection. Jean Santos, who is one of our speakers, part of the advisory team that works together with us, will handle this presentation. But we also invite two other people to be here with us to present very important initiatives for the field. We have with us Susan Schaumers, from NTIA to present the Friends of the IGF project, which tries to preserve all the memory 
of all IGF's meetings, and also to talk about the documentation process that organized everything produced in the context of ICANN, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, we have Ron Da Silva, one of ICANN board members. Each of them will have 10 minutes, and then we will have a discussion with the audience. Susan, please, you will be the first. Then we have Ron, and then Jean. Please. Thank you, Hartmut. It's a pleasure to be here with everyone this morning. Good morning. Um, so my name is Susan, and I'm going to talk about the Friends of the IGF project. Uh, the Friends of the IGF project is a grassroots effort to increase public access, access to over 10 years of IGF discussions on internet governance and policy issues. Uh, the core element of our project is friendsoftheigf.org, and it is a living archive of IGF discussions. So that website features a searchable database of found transcripts, video, agendas, and reports from IGF events stretching back to the very first IGF in Athens in 2006. So just um, a little in the way of uh, history of friends of the IGF.org, why did, why did we begin this website? Well, it was about um, 2013, and there was a discussion amongst members of the multi-stakeholder advisory group at the IGF about how to continue to implement uh, improvements to the IGF based upon recommendations of the working group on IGF improvements. And we all saw um, that there was something that was missing in the way of access to previous discussion. So, so often the MEG had said, well, we'd like to encourage new faces, we'd like to, um, to come to the IGF. Um, we want to bring in uh, new people, new ideas. But really, part of being able to do that successfully is uh, to help enable these new faces to do research and to understand what the IGF is about. Uh, so a few of us got together and we decided that we would make every effort to try and collect all of the transcripts and videos and to put them into one place. So previously this had not been done. Uh, so there were different parts of the web, um, some weren't online, and so we undertook this effort, um, and it was an open effort, anybody could help join the cause, to find all of these, these really truly valuable pieces of internet governance history. Um, and so over the course of a few years, uh, and a lot of uh, virtual meetings, and a lot of volunteer effort, uh, we were able to create a website that served this basic function. Um, and so uh, around two years ago, uh, CGI.br uh, became the secretariat for this very important project. And where we are now is that we have a renewed uh, website. It's at beta.friendsoftheigf.org. Um, but so we have now built a capability which will enable different IGF initiatives, national, regional, sub-regional, to be able to upload their content into the archive. And really the vision here is to create a state-of-the-art archival database for IGF discussions from the global, regional, and national levels. But more importantly, as this is part of a project, um, to have that be built and sustained by the multi-stakeholder community. Um, so, so we are looking um, in this next year moving ahead now that we have uh, built a new website um, to be able to encourage other, other folks to support it, whether through um, in-kind donations or volunteer time and to help spread the word. Um, and so I think the ultimate if, when we can get there, hopefully. But the, the, real, the real vision is if you have a living archive of IGF discussions that is translatable, that is open to text and data mining, 
um, with, with semantic search, just think about all of the insights that we could glean from having that information um, available to us and to have it be open and uh, never treated in a commercial way. And so that's, that's basically, um, that's where we are right now. And so we it would invite you to join us going forward and help support the effort. Thank you. We will have time uh, for questions later, but I now invite Ron to introduce what ICANN is doing. Excellent, thank you. <clears throat> it's rather an interesting uh, crowd we have this morning. It's, it's uh, a bit uh, mm -hmm. mismatched with the size room we have here. Thank you for, um, for uh, the, those of you that gathered here in the middle to make it feel a little bit more intimate. I, I like this, rather than it being, you know, vacuous with lots of space and lots of, lots of air. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm Ron De Silva, CEO of uh, uh, Network Technologies Global, also member uh, board of ICANN. And uh, I'm here to share the, about the information transparency, transparency initiative uh, undergoing um, at ICANN. And I have slides. I think we'll bring them up here in just a second. <coughs> Well, I can't see. <laughs> there you go. So why is this important to, to, uh, to ICANN? Um, you know, ICANN has an, an, uh, an enormous uh, repository of, of data that it's a Thank you. My mic decided to turn itself off. Um, I was saying, so ICANN's got an enormous uh, repository of, uh, of content that it's accumulated over 20 years. And uh, why is this important? Well, today it is um, all pretty much buried under, under uh, a number of different web, uh, web presence or web identities. Uh, different uh, websites that not just the ICANN.org website, but all the different uh, constituencies, all the different SONACs, each have their own website as well with yet, you know, additional um, uh, content that's been accumulated over, over many years. So there's, there's a huge amount of, there's, a, there's, there's this huge trough of data available. And the challenge is it's not very well indexed. It's extremely difficult to find things. Um, that you know go across many years of different content, whether that's uh, a presentation like a, a PowerPoint or, or or a PDF or a Word document or uh, a, a, a a transcript from from a live meeting or an audio clip from a meeting or uh, video or other media. There's there's so many different types of content that is that is saved in 20 years of of accumulation through the various different uh, web interfaces of the organization. Um, that you know, finding something of interest is is a bit of a challenge, and that's complicated even further when you consider there are six different languages supported officially uh, for all of this content, and many of it may be produced in in a subset of those languages, or perhaps all of those languages. And not having a, an easy way to, based on a language preference, to research, retrieve, and uh, and be able to easily access content. Um, is really is really a challenge. Next slide, please. So this content is really at risk. The content is only valuable. This this data is only useful if it can be retrieved. If there is something you, um, uh, somebody needs to find, if you're looking for a particular piece of data from one year or another year or one topic or or another topic, if it's if it's there but inaccessible or indexed in a way that it is not retrievable efficiently, then uh, that content really becomes useless. And that's, that's, really, that's really concerning for, for us as a community. There is a, a, a document management system place in place, but it is you know, clearly lacking in a few key things. It, it doesn't have sufficient uh, mechanisms to 
to label and to then arc, uh, to, to organize um, so that it can be quickly and easily retrieved. Next slide, please. This, this particularly comes to the forefront of uh, the attention of the organization in response to the accountability and transparency uh, mandates as part of the, the transition. And you know, the, the organization has really taken it to heart that in order to, in order to be transparent and to be accountable for the different activities that the organization is doing or the community is doing, that we need to have easy, accessible, visible um, access to all this content and all this data. So this, this is um, you know, part of what's motivating it, besides just a basic need that we've heard from the community of having access to, to the content in a, in a, well, a good um, and easy f framework. We also feel compelled as part of our mandate and our mission to be accountable, to be transparent to the community. So that's another motivation here. Next slide. Good, thank you. So to enforce, uh, to, to make this um, possible, it's not as simple as uh, changing the website. That, that is just, or changing the websites. There's a dozen and a half different websites in existence. It's not as straightforward as simply changing how you look at the content. The, the challenge for the organization is we need to have an enforceable governance model on how content is created and how it is described and labeled. Um, and that points more towards the need for changed workflows, changed processes. Really 80% of this initiative is focused inwardly on how do we ensure documents are um, routed through a standard and repeatable process that once we have new tagging mechanisms, new metadata, new information to make it indexable, you know, indexable and, and retrievable, we need to make sure that there is discipline in place that documents, not just the historical documents that exist, that that's, a, that's one task to go back and relabel things, but new documents as they're created are correctly and accurately tagged in a way that it future proofs uh, content retrieval in the future, uh, going forward. Next slide, please. So there's a lot of content. We have over 100,000 uh, pieces of published content uh, across these different brands. And um, you know, this is gonna continue to grow as we, every time, have a meeting, have a call, produce a, 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 a presentation, um, send out emails, send out newsletters, all these things and multiplied by different languages. It's uh, 25 to 30% per year is what we're seeing as, as a growth trajectory on the number of unique pieces of content that needs to be managed. Next slide. So I talked about the need for governance. Um, there are really these two elements. It's one, having an architecture that can support it, um, but then secondly, having the discipline around tagging those documents um, across different languages. Next slide. There, um, there will be some changes to the external uh, presentation. Um, there's, there's significant expense to the organization today in maintaining uh, a dozen and a half or so different uh, websites and the publishing discipline around those websites and the framework and the and the, the, the different um, layouts and, and how, how we're supporting those from a cloud standpoint varies significantly. So certainly there's some opportunity to get some synergies and some, some uh, consistency across the different brands um, and get some uh, uh, savings around that. But the bulk of the work, like I said earlier, is really internally focused in making sure that, uh, that as things are produced, as things are created, it goes through a consistent and predictable uh, methodology to tag documents, tag uh, media, and, uh, and catalog it and save it in a way that is uh, going forward uh, no longer this uh, you know, gigantic uh, disorganized collection of, of data, but it's a, a structured and uh, well uh, 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 indexed and, and retrievable set of data. Next slide. Uh, I'm going to jump one more bit of redundancy here. So what is the 
uh, information transparency initiative, it's exactly what I was describing. It is this effort um, not to create a new website, but to create a new document management system where documents are uh, better cataloged, organized, indexed across multiple languages, and then whatever front end uh, website we put in, uh, you know, out, out to the external facing side of the organization, that would be much easier than to leverage this, this new scalable hier hierarchical uh, document storage system. Last slide. So motivators, why, why is the organization undertaking this? Uh, it's gonna improve uh, transparency. Um, it, the quality of the content is going to go up. Uh, it is actually an improvement on cost. We've, we've looked at the financials uh, over the next few years and maintaining these discrete webs, web, web properties as well as uh, this um, disorganized set of assets uh, has, has a significant cost to maintain and, and the simplifying things and putting it consistently is actually a, a great uh, financial savings to the organization over, over a number of years, so we're, we're excited about that. I am in particular, I chair the finance committee, so. Um, uh, I'm particularly excited about that. Uh, it ensures uh, future proofing of the content and uh, lays really a good foundation uh, for um, our ecosystem, which is you know across uh, multiple languages, multiple um, cultures, and uh, uh, dis you know distributed over over the entire world. And uh, lastly, you know this really, like I said earlier, it it, uh, it the we feel in order to meet the transparency. Uh, and accountability mechanisms that that is a mandate for the organization. This is one. This is just one element in in what we're doing in order to to achieve that. So thank you. Thank you, Ron. And uh, now we will have the third speaker. The questions will be after the three presentations. I saw that the whole game of the internet was about classification of information and about search engine. And now I discovered that the very organization which claim to bring the uh, universal information, universal library to mankind have severe problems of their own about sorting their own information. So why not turn IGF into SEGF, Search Engine Governance Forum? I think that would be a great step forward for the world of information. Thank you. Thank you. Now the third uh, speaker will uh, introduce some information coming from CGI. Giancarlos, please. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for your presence. Yes. Excuse me. Uh, thank you for your presence here. My name is Jean. I'm part of CGI.br advisory team. Uh, the main goal of this session is to foster a discussion arena for important initiatives related to collections, documentation, and information organization internet governance field. Uh, in CGI.br, we started to develop a collection focused on internet governance. The project is still quite new, uh, but it's now becoming more concrete. Uh, the idea of for this presentation is to talk about some main aspects of the project and the process of build this collection. Uh, it's envisions the creation of reference center, both physical and digital, with relevant information to support research, policy making, and, and other interests relating to different aspects of internet governance. Our focus is to bring together collection in one single place, um, but, uh, both physical and digital, so as it can support researchers and everyone, everyone interested in the field, uh, we are developing a physical collection comprised mainly by bibliographic collections with books, technical manuals, journals, and multimedia materials. The main goal is that these collections become a reference of research in internet governance. Therefore, we are seeking to build an initial group of some fundamental materials in the field of internet governance based on, on some criteria like uh, importance to tracks, subjects and ev events organized in the field, citation in academic studies, papers, documents, and others. Um, 
One of the most important phases of the project was the assessment of alternative and adoptions of an adequate software tool to help categorize and organize the collection, to make them available internally and publicly. Sen since the beginning of, of the criteria was that you'd be an open source tool to only because of the cost involved, not only the cost involved, but mainly because of the opportunity for interoperability standards. One of our main tools and on of the main development until now was the implementation of software uh, is a software to catalog materials and put the information available. Koha is a software that fulfills those functions. It manages libraries in an integrated manner. It supports the major part of libraries demands online catalog, like essential online catalog with searching functions, classification, permissions management, circulation, acquisitions, uh, reporters, journals. Our purpose is to use that tool either to search in a vast collection with diverse information, search, uh, search bibliographic, uh, separated by subject, created in many different fields, as well um, the, the acquired for information and the access to all materials produced by NICBR and uh, CGI.BR. A future goal is to have all this products, service, and materials assembled by collection in an unique search interface uh, with integrated search. Um, by now, our efforts are focused on the prospection of technically and financially adequate tool. On a day to use a sort of an institutional repository based on the open source software day space, which manage digital collections with a variety of other fun functional functionalities among uh, make available diverse materials such audio, video, and test uh, in a perspective of digital preservation, being supported by interoperability standards of institutional repositories, such an open archive initiatives and others, so as to collect bibliographic metadata. To tools like these repositories uh, supports, for example, productions of statis statistics about use of this collection. Um, one of our focus is to establish a cooperation with other organizations like universities, librarians, uh, research groups, and others, based, for example, on the exchange publications. There is that uh, in Latin America, uh, traditions uh, with uh, cooperation networks among librarians and information centers. Um, we have been also sending our main realize the different institutions like research groups inside and outside Brazil. We want to build a network uh, of information source among these organizations. Uh, among the next steps for the project development, there is a this idea of making a call for community to inputs to collect uh, recommendations and to be consider considered in the de development of the collections as well as specific titles, materials, people consider relevant for the collection. Um, so uh, some points uh, with challenges ch challenge in this, this process. Uh, I would like to close this talk in raising some challenges we consider crucial for this debate. Uh, there are several other challenges, but um, in your perspective, some of the challenges inherent to organization information uh, and knowledge in this, this field of internet governance is complex. Uh, some, some, some challenges like uh, standards, semantics, controlled vocabularies, integration of database, but database for information retrie retrieval imp improvement, one of the points we have observed is um, a great number of materials related to internet governance, such digital books and reports, do not uh, carry an unique identifier, for example, inter international standard book number or international standard serial number and others. That is the challenge of feeding the database with materials and as well in, and mainly with metadata linked uh, to those materials. Uh, multimedia materials. Uh, there is a huge production of these materials. Um, 
that question, how think about documentation and memory when talking account of multimedia materials like uh, such audios, images, and videos? It is common nowadays to store videos in external big platform as YouTube, Vimeo, uh, Dali Motion. Uh, wha what are the implications of this practice for memory preservation and information integrity in this field? So, uh, my role in the, the CGI advisory team is so uh, provide solution for enable CGI put together the reference center it intends to have, but uh, I do not do alone. I do it in the context of the activities formed by CGI.br advisory team. So my colleagues uh, here uh, join us to the discussion you have now. Thank you. Thank you, Giancarlo. Uh, after the speeches from Susan and Ron and Giancarlo, uh, giving us an idea what we need to do, probably hard work before us because it's very, in the beginning, we need to listen to you to see if you have comments, contributions, proposals. So now I will open the floor for comments, proposals, questions. Uh, we have some time for interaction. Please use the time that you have now, please. Let's start with Lito and then behind. Thank you. Lito Ibarra, also with uh, ICANBOR. I would like to add a comment to what Ron had said. In a parallel and ongoing project within ICANN, uh, in, uh, as, as, as an initiative from uh, former chairman Steve Crocker, uh, ICANN is also carrying out the ICANN history project, which is already on the web page. So uh, in order to, to safeguard the, the history, the origins of the icon itself. So uh, that's another piece we can look at. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, Tom McKenzie uh, from Items International in Paris. Uh, this is a subject which I find uh, particularly interesting, having uh, just co-authored uh, two uh, ICANN um, independent reviews. Uh, and so as independent reviewers coming in from the outside, um, we have to bur burrow into the uh, archives of uh, all the data uh, that's put to at our disposal. And we found it uh, extraordinarily difficult uh, to, to, track, uh, to try and track uh, the activities uh, that have been carried out by the two parts of the ICANN system that we were reviewing. We were looking at at large uh, last year uh, and uh, the address supporting organization earlier this year. Um, so it, it really was um, very difficult. And, and in fact, we had to rely for most of the time on Google uh, just to sort of, and search words uh, to find the information that we were looking for rather than the ICANN website itself, which was absolutely uh, at least superficially, it's kind of attractive. But as soon as you try to burrow into it, it becomes uh, unnavigable. Um, so we welcome, obviously, these kinds of initiatives which do uh, contribute towards the key objective of, and I think you mentioned it, Ron, of accountability. I think it's absolutely key uh, that if you want to be uh, seen to be accountable, uh, uh, that you, you, you at the very least need to have um, a clear uh, archive and website. And I do have some sympathy for the gentleman that was sitting here opposite uh, until he walked out, um, uh, saying that, um, that, you know, at the very least, the organizations that are responsible for uh, the archiving of information should have a clean uh, uh, sort of history. Um, so I suppose I'd just like to end with one question, which is what sort of timeline do you have for um, completing uh, this work, uh, which will obviously, as I say, yeah, be very welcome. Thank you. The next speaker will be Ron. Probably you can answer this question. You have your comment, and then you are. Yeah, let me. I, I wanted to first make a comment. Um, the gentleman's uh, statement before he left uh, regarding. Um, I mean, sir. I mean, I, I can appreciate. And I think everybody in the room can appreciate that search is difficult 
And even if you pull up a Google, you know, your browser now and you pull up Google and you put in some information, you're invariably going to get a lot of results that you don't want, that are not interesting, that are not giving you the document or the data or the link or the information that you're searching for. Search is a big challenge. And it's not um, the mission of ICANN to go solve search as a technology, right? We are, our mission is to ensure the coordination of domain names, IP addresses, and protocols are done uh, efficiently for the, the whole of the internet, not to create uh, new search technology. So I, I, I just wanted to correct that because I think that was an assertion that was made. Um, but even still, you know, the, the, the whole uh, um, research in how to get better search results and how to better, uh, independent of how you're labeling and how you're describing your documents, which is something that we can solve, and I think you're hearing you know, the interest of the panel here is to solve that problem. That's within, you know, our ability to, to address. But then subsequent to that, being able to have third party or other search mechanisms to, you know, really uh, churn through that information and get the results you want is a completely different science than, uh, than what we're describing. So um, let's see, then you had a question regarding timeline. Uh, for the ITI project, there's, there's a pretty significant uh, effort underway that, uh, uh, we'll be engaged in the next couple of years to, to get it up and running, to get the process in place, to get the workflows updated, to get the um, uh, metadata uh, schemas defined. Um, and then there's, there's two tasks from there. There's, it's a never-ending project because then this needs to be implemented going forward on every new document that's created. And then there's, there's a bit of a backlog of all the information that we have that we have to go back and then figure out how do you prioritize that? How do you relabel it? How do you introduce that into the system? So that's, I don't, I don't have a time frame on that in the second piece, but obviously the go forward is going to be a, a new way of, uh, of addressing uh, documentation. Diego? Hi, uh, I'm Diego. I work for CGI.PR advisory team, but in, in this actually work, uh, open forum, I have three hats, different hats. One is actually someone who uh, follows ICON discussions. I also work uh, for the Secretariat team of the Friends of the IGF, and we have been developing the beta.friendsoftheigf, which is a new portal, etc. cetera, and, and I'll get to it in a, in a couple of minutes. And, and I also am a colleague of Jean, and we discuss a lot, a lot of things. Uh, and um, I think that the basic question of this panel is, what is actually a document in terms of internet governance? because we, we recently came back from uh, the Abu Dhabi meeting and we brought a very nice document which was handed in, in Steve Crocker's farewell party, that, that, that action figure of Steve Crocker. And that is actually a document. And then in our internal discussions, we realized, for instance, that in any event, internet governance event, we go, we have a lot of stickers, we, had a lot of uh, we have a lot of T-shirts, we have a lot of flyers and, and things that are distributed. These are all documents. So um, I think that's the basic question. I, I understand that the project of ICANN is just like documenting working flows, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but uh, so we are actually in a, in a different end here. We, we, we actually want to create for the Brazilian audience and, and for uh, the world public as well, a sort of a, a, a physical, as Jan said, and digital uh, reference center of things that have been collected during our existence. So I, I don't think we will have a timeline and it's actually a much more complex task, an ongoing task that we, we intend to, to develop in, in the couple of years that are ahead of us. And that, that discusses with the question posed by that gentleman. There. I, it's unfortunate that he's not here with us because I, I don't think that we will ever be able to build the mankind library, the, the, let's say the Babylonian uh, library, mostly because the, the, the production rate of different documents, and I'm not talking about just like paper and printing materials, but every sort of document, they, they are a lot higher than the capacity that we have to catalog and to blah, 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 blah. Uh, and I think that it's pretty interesting that one of the things that you mentioned is just like search engine stuff. And one of the things that we could accomplish for the Friends of the IGF project is actually a very good search engine tool. And the idea of putting together uh, this panel I is mostly because there are synergies between the Friends of the IGF effort, which is just like, let's try to preserve the memory of, of, of the IGF because, I mean, there are discussions that were lost. There are videos that we cannot find anywhere. Uh, the majority of the videos that we have available now are on YouTube. And if, 
YouTube goes bankrupt tomorrow, we might lose everything that we have. Uh, yes, we have redundancy in servers that are scattered across UN nations headquarters, but th there are things that we can do and, and CGI could also work on that. So what we actually wanted to do with this panel, because we saw Teresa's presentation, I thought, I think it was uh, South Johannesburg, Johannesburg yeah? Uh, and we just wanted to put everybody on the table for a first conversation on the matter. So I just wanted to, to jump in in the discussions to say, there is something that has to be discussed in the context of the IJF, F IJF and we intended to, to bring these discussions to the table. Thank you. Other comments? Yes, please. Introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Anju and I represent the Pacific. Um, I'm from Fiji. Um, we work with 22 Pacific Island countries and just regarding libraries, um, because you see that a lot of the documentation, you lose a lot of data, you lose a lot of information. What we've done in the Pacific is we've created an online and offline uh, knowledge management system. And this is basically, it's a repository of 38,000 plus uh, information for the Pacific. So what's happening right now is that we're losing a lot of data. A lot of the stuff is happening on the paper, but no one is actually documenting it. So what we're doing it now is not just digitizing library books or anything, but anything and everything. And we've created also a, a photo library, a video library. So like you said, if YouTube dies today, <laughs> there will be some sort of, um, I think, knowledge retention as well within the country. So I think this is one of the things that we're working on. Thank you for your comments. Any other comment? My understanding is that we try to put together some efforts to avoid that we need to duplicate. So if we can learn uh, from some initiatives, probably we can have some extra cooperation agreement between us informally and to support, I think, the idea that Susan started some years ago with friends of the IGF uh, now we are working together and we learn together and we start to have our own project and ICANN is doing the same and now we have Fiji uh, doing something for the Pacific. Probably we can help items to have easier access to information. I remember your interview with a lot of questions, Tom. Uh, it makes it easier if we have this in the uh, archives or in a very, let's say, uh, good way. Another comment, some questions. We don't need to stay here until mid, uh, midday or uh, lunchtime. Uh, Vinicius, you have a comment? No, it's because what the, I, I forgot your name, sorry. <laughs> uh, what Andrew said, uh, I just, I'm just connecting what, he, what she said with what Diego said. Um, we have actually three different initiatives, but with um, very similar challenges for organizing all the information. And actually, this one that, that Jean presented um, from CGI is one of the initiatives, actually. It, it's the, the collection is just one of the initiatives. We also, we, we actually have uh, a set of discussions going on uh, inside CGI about the organization of the information, semantics, difficulties of organizing the institutional information. We are discussing all these things there also. So I think if we if, if we can in any in any in any sense establish some sort of cooperation and some some conver continued conversation about those challenges we i think it will be of much help for everybody thanks thank you Vinicius. Uh, susan please thanks and um hartman just Building on what you said about collaboration, I think it's key for these types of projects um, to learn f from other initiatives. And so often, because of the nature of the project and the initiative itself, it's, it really depends on community support. Um, and so I could say for, for the friends of the IGF, I think Diego and his team sat down and had a pizza party and uploaded all the content by hand over over a day, sometimes, you know, I've one whole week, one whole week. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's a lot of pizza and a lot of a lot of time. <laughs> but um, and certainly when we'll be uploading, you know, I'll be contributing and um, to the uploading. But right now we're doing it by hand. And so the so question is, how do we collaborate with um, the secretariat, for example, to develop a way for the content to um, come in 
uh, in an automated way? Um, how do we collaborate with others to be able to develop an API for the content to be open and text and data mined? Um, and so I think really the, the, one of the key things about this project is collaboration and making sure that's a group effort. And I think that there's some hope there because I mean, nobody likes it when a library burns down, right? It's probably one of the saddest things that <laughs> happens. Um, and so it, this is something that despite, you know, whatever stakeholder group you're in, um, wherever you're from, what, despite your positions on certain issues, I mean, this is something that I really think truly that the internet governance community can um, come together and come to support. Thank you. Some comments or are we ready to go? Hartman, sorry, hi, this is Nick from the yes, RIPE NCC. Yeah, Nick, yes. Interesting topic, um, I'm, I'm still trying to get my head around this, this session. Um, I don't know if this is for the IGF only to find a way to collaborate with all the participants here to feed into one area to, uh, as a library, let's say. Or are we just hearing from different organizations and what they're doing with their uh, documentation? We are, uh, I was just having this conversation with uh, the RIPE chair the other day before I came here uh, as far as even the regional, in it, regional internet registries independently have their own uh, organization of documentation. But I think that overall, we have, it's all piecemeal. And I think there's a lot that's been lost uh, over time. I've been in the, uh, with the regional internet registries for over 10 or 15 years now. And uh, even with office moves and you know, documentation that has been printed that's not been recorded, and we've lost a lot. And, and, I, and I think that this is a, a sad thing. And I, and, I, and I think this is a good initiative. But I, again, I'm not quite sure where this session is heading. I don't know if this is, again, focused on IGF uh, documentation or trying to get all of us inspired to IGF has, don't have the mission to put this together. The idea is to use different initiatives, and the idea is collaboration. The idea is to work together. Let us learn. You bring contributions, we can do it. There's nothing under one central coordination. Personally, I am against have organizations taking care of everything. We need to use the free contribution coming from everyone you see the example from Fiji, you see the example from CGI and others. Let's do in a very open uh, cooperation way. But it's important to know what others are doing. I know that the ROS are doing something. We do it for LACNIC and you for RIPE. Let's work together. So the information that you have, uh, probably you need to spread out the good word, the good <laughs> archives, the good information that you put together. Someone, uh, Susan, please. Yeah, just to clarify that um, the Friends of the IGF project is not um, part of the IGF secretariat. Um, the project was born out of um, a, a MEG, MEG meeting in 2013, and so it's part of the community. It's designed to support the mission of the IGF. Um, but I just want to clarify that it's not the secretariat. Good. Uh, maybe one of the things, uh, I'm, I'm really sorry, but I'm just like, that's awful to speak like that. But in 2015, in Jean Pessoa, we actually started a conversation. Uh, we actually just, uh, we from CGI advisory team, we started a conversation uh, among different internet observatories uh, that, that are out there. And we started with, what, 20 something initiatives. We repeated the experience in the IGF in 2016, and we put these people together and we used the uh, IGF as a focal, uh, a focal space uh, to uh, enable conversation between those different projects. And uh, actually now we are sort of a network that talks throughout the year intersessionally. Uh, and we actually just intended this session with, uh, with a lot of humility uh, to be a session for putting some projects that we observed that were out there in 2017 that could simply talk together and maybe start putting people on board to emulate the what, what we could accomplish with the observatories things. That, that's it. Ron, your final comment? 
Yeah, I, I, um, I definitely appreciate, uh, pardon me, your response. That, you know, there, there's a lot of efforts underway um, to uh, kind of address some of the same problems. And uh, to the extent that we can uh, collaborate and, and share best practices, uh, it benefits everybody. Susan, you'd like to share final comment? Sure, um, I'd like to echo what uh, Ron just said, but um, also in terms of the uh, Friends of the IGF project, uh, when we can develop a more honed call to action for the community, um, when we figure out exactly the best way that we can ask you to help us, uh, we will uh, be uh, contacting, contacting everyone. So thank you. John Carlos. Uh, I think uh, when we're talking about uh, collections, standards, um, information retrieval, I think uh, uh, cooperation with the community is f essential for, for, for this. I think, uh, I hope uh, in the next EGFs and others we can continue in this discussing this and, and I think uh, we can uh, cooperation more and more on this this to discuss debate debate uh, standards and uh, some some aspects uh, spe specific aspects of this this field. Thank you, uh, Tom. You have a comment. Well, it's probably, if this is the wrapping up of the session, it's probably not for me to comment at the, this point. But I mean, I, I was I just the last thing I really wanted to say is that, I, as far as I'm concerned, there's some there's some urgency to get these kinds of projects uh, underway. Um, um, one of the uh, findings that we had from our from conducting a review, admittedly, it was of ICANN, so it wasn't of these other two organisations, but. Uh, was that there is a sort of feeling out in the sort of the wider community uh, that ICANN is a tricky kind of um, environment to get involved in. Um, I mean, when you show up at meetings, that lots of people are talking in acronyms and things like that. So simply from a simply from a, a sort of g getting involved kind of thing, it, it's it's sort of tricky. Um, and uh, then. If the website is also a sort of tricky uh, sort of place to navigate, there's some people have a kind of sense that maybe this, this is a sort of deliberate attempt to kind of keep people out. Um, uh, and so, Nigel, wait, let it finish. No, no, no. I, I don't think this is, I don't think there is a deliberate attempt, but there is a, what we collected, the, we did collect, uh, uh, you know, people who said that, you know, that it's impossible, we can't understand the sort of language that they're talking, and the website is sort of tricky to navigate. So any attempt, and all these attempts to, to help uh, uh, outsiders um, uh, navigate this information, I think will be very welcome and will help the organization, will strengthen the organization, and make it more accountable and do all those kinds of things. So the faster you can do it, the better. I mean, that was my r real point. The, there is a sort of an urgency to get these projects um, underway. Thank you. My, my, please, Nick. I, I think, I think that the NCC is guilty of having an over, <laughs> a very heavy website, and not intentionally so. We, we have so many uh, uh, members of the community that we serve, and uh, yes, we, we have to keep m perfecting the, the, uh, the, the website and, and, and reducing the amount of verbiage. Uh, it's it's difficult. Uh, it's it's a real challenge, but it's not to, uh, certainly not to you know to, you know put people off or or, con or con purposely confuse them. But I completely understand you know the, uh, when people come to the site you know wh where do I go? What am I looking at? Yeah yeah it, it's it's a, it's a challenge, but uh, it's an ongoing uh, process for us. Hold on. Yeah, I just wanted to to follow up Tom on your comment. Um, your mic's still on too, by the way. Um, and that is. Y Completely agree. The, you know, the organization believes uh, that the sooner we get it done, the better. Um, not only is it, you know, helps the community and, and, and provides goodwill and, and I think addresses some of the, the, the mandates on the organization for accountability and transparency, but again, to put on my financial hat again, there's, there are financial incentives to get it done sooner. The longer we prolong, the longer it takes, then the, you know, the, the longer it's we're going to miss out on some of these uh, financial synergies we can get by having a you know a, a new refreshed consolidated uh, document management infrastructure. So, totally agree. 
the idea was to have a seat, uh, seat for, for collaboration. The idea is to exchange experiments and different cases. So we just listen that some others are doing the same or try to do the same. Let's cooperate and work together. Our time run out. We need to give up the, the place for the next session. Applause to our speakers. <laughs> Thank you very much for attending this session. Not so many participants. But the rooms are also too big and there's yeah, so yeah. We know that we have a lot of initiatives doing yeah. the same. The idea yeah. is put them together. together. That's that is the beginning. But now you have your time. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. How many people do you guys think we had in this room? Oh, there, there was a sheet where some people no, had no, signed. No, no, I, I counted. Because it didn't seem to be, but we had 30 people here. Yeah, the room is such. So that's yeah. a ridiculously yeah. big room. Yeah. And we should have the alternative and the opportunity yeah. Yeah. just like to... That's what I was saying, that this room is for about 100 people. If